Hello. On behalf of the OECD Con uh, Committee on Consumer Policy, welcome everyone to the OECD's International Conference on the Consumer Marketplace of the Future. Uh, my name is Hugh Stevenson from the U.S. Federal Trade Commission, and I'm the current chair of the OECD Committee on Consumer Policy. I am absolutely delighted to have so many of you participating here today. At last count, we had 1,472 folks registered from 99 countries. Uh, we're here to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Committee on Consumer Policy. <clears throat> and we'll also take that occasion to consider the progress made to date to protect and empower consumers. Consumers who play a critical role in driving competition and innovation in our global digital marketplace. We're fortunate to have an impressive array of presenters and panelists representing governments, consumer authorities, academia, business, and civil society. And over the next three days, they and, and you will share views on ways to harness the benefits of the digital transformation to ensure that consumers are empowered to participate confidently and securely in the marketplace now and in the future. To frame these discussions, we will begin with uh, keynote presentations from three distinguished speakers. First, Ulrich Versigard Knudsen, the Deputy Secretary General of the OECD. Then, Didier Reinders, the EU Commissioner for Consumers and Justice. And then, Rebecca Slaughter, the Acting Chair of the US Federal Trade Commission. Before turning to them, however, we'd like to set the stage for the conference with this short video tracing the profound changes to both the consumer marketplace and the committee's work that have occurred over the past half century. We all actively participate in the consumer marketplace of today's increasingly complex digital world, from the very young to the very old. And within this marketplace, it's vital that all of us as consumers are protected. Protected from unfair and misleading conduct, as well as unsafe products. Protecting consumers also means educating them so that they are empowered to make choices that protect their own economic interests and lives. And to that end, the OECD's Committee on Consumer Policy has devoted its efforts for over half a century. But 50 years ago, the marketplace was radically different and the global economy orders of magnitude smaller. The committee's earliest efforts focused on creating consumer protection laws and institutions within member countries, but it quickly pivoted to meet the challenges of today's more digital and expansive global marketplace. Now that transactions, data, and goods move freely across borders, establishing consumer protection laws at the international level has become central to the committee's mission. The digital transformation, too, has made its mark on the consumer marketplace, transforming the very kinds of products that we buy, as well as the way in which we learn about and purchase them. E-commerce, for instance, may have simplified how, when, and from where we can shop, but sometimes this level of convenience doesn't come without risk. And the borderless nature of it has complicated the job of authorities working to enforce consumer protection laws across jurisdictions. Adding to this complexity are the new business models emerging from the new data-driven economy. The good news? The Committee on Consumer Policy has developed policy recommendations, toolkits, and best practice guides. It also launched the OECD Global Recalls Portal, which collects and shares information about product recall notices from around the world. What might the marketplace of the future have in store for us? And are we prepared? Machine learning and artificial intelligence, for instance, already offer a whole wide range of benefits, including greater personalization and enhanced product safety. But in the years ahead, could this technology further existing social biases? The Internet of Things, too, has meant greater convenience for most of us. But what if the safety of these devices suddenly becomes compromised by some software glitch or hacker? And in the face of today's mounting environmental problems, many consumers want to go green. But how can we help turn this desire into action? If the challenges of today offer any clarity on what may lie ahead, international cooperation will be essential in tackling the challenges of the future. Equally, policies fostering sustainability will be critical in paving the way forward. 
The Committee on Consumer Policy is committed to act as a key international forum, improving consumer policy, research, and cooperation. This June, the OECD will host the Consumer Marketplace of the Future Conference. We want to hear from you. Follow along at oe.cd slash consumer 2021. Thank you. A good reminder of how the consumer journey has changed. Uh, with that, let me turn to OECD Deputy Secretary General Knudsen to share his vision for current and future consumer policy. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. Distinguished uh, speakers, guests, colleagues, uh, it really is a pleasure to be here with you today to celebrate uh, more than half a century of consumer policy at the uh, OECD. A good deal has uh, changed since uh, 1969 when uh, OECD's Committee on Consumer Policy was uh, established. So it was uh, born the same year as me, so, so it's not that old. Um, but, uh, but, but back then, of course, uh, the uh, OECD's uh, work on consumers focused on laying the foundation really for sound and consistent consumer policy frameworks across countries, as it still does now. Uh, but in a world where, of course, the Internet uh, was still just uh, four computers connected to U.S. Department of Defense's uh, ARPANET. 1998 uh, marked a real turning point when it became clear that the nascent uh, online consumer marketplace was going to drive growth and development globally. Building consumer trust in e-commerce uh, now became a, a real priority. The following year, the OECD released the first versions of its uh, intergovernmental standard on e-commerce to ensure that consumers are as protected shopping online as they are offline. It was a prescient move. Uh, at that time, the share of e-commerce and total retail sales was still well below 1% in most countries. But fast forward then 20 years or more, and e-commerce had jumped to 12% of uh, all retail sales in the European Union, almost 14% in the United States, and a staggering almost 25% in China. As the COVID-19 uh, pandemic has moved us further online, such growth has only accelerated with e-commerce retail now growing by around 40% year on year in Europe, the United States and Korea, significantly faster than total retail. Many of us now have uh, greater access to ever more products at competitive prices, uh, purchased at any time from businesses of all sizes uh, and often through online uh, marketplaces. We also benefit from personalized uh, e-commerce experiences uh, powered by our data and technologies uh, like artificial intelligence and the Internet of Things. It helps us meet the growing desire for more sustainable and safer products that can be improved over time and, and repaired remotely. However, these benefits uh, have not come without risks uh, and challenges for consumers. We saw a little bit of that in the video. Uh, these include scams, uh, banned or or recalled unsafe products available online, misleading commercial practices that leverage our data to prey on our behavioral biases and vulnerabilities online. For example, we're often faced with the lengthy and technical information that we barely read or understand. I don't mind admitting uh, that, that sometimes uh, I do not always check online privacy terms and conditions before clicking uh, accept, and I suspect that that goes for many of you as well. You may also have been misled by dark commercial patterns. Uh, for example, if you were urged to buy a product before it sold out, had trouble canceling an online subscription, or ended up paying more for a product than the advertised price. We're all consumers, and we all have an interest in better consumer uh, policies that can empower us in the digital and green transformation, the two big transformations of our time and the decades ahead. And this conference is an opportunity to share your experiences, ideas, and vision and help set the path for a trustworthy, inclusive, and sustainable uh, consumer marketplace of the future. The OECD will continue, I promise, to leverage its role as a global standard setter and as a hub for evidence and good practices. We want to ensure consumer policy stays relevant and fit for purpose. So let's together look forward to another uh, 50 years of successful partnership. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Mr. Knudsen, for that presentation. Uh, we turn next to uh, Commissioner Reinders. Uh, Commissioner, we look forward to your comments about the main priorities uh, in the new EU consumer agenda to get us started. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Stevenson. And uh, it's a pleasure for me to, uh, to be with you today celebrating 
50 years of uh, consumer policy at the OECD, and we have seen the video with many achievements and many discussions at the OECD uh, level. And it's also a pleasure to join uh, Mr. Vestager Knutsen and Mrs. Slaughter at the opening session of this conference. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, predicting the marketplace of the future is difficult because many factors influence consumer behavior. Looking at the, the pandemic, people spent less money on services and more on their homes. Uh, some preferred to save. Overall, consumers' priorities changed. Uh, what is clear is that online shopping will continue to raise and sustainability is increasingly important for consumers. But not all consumers have the same choices. I'm talking about vulnerable groups, especially uh, those who were hit hard by the pandemic. For example, elderly, people without internet access, and those with too many debts to pay. Indebtedness was a very uh, important element during the crisis. In fact, income inequalities have increased, resulting in further polarization of consumption in all areas. So, as we uh, recover from this difficult period, I want uh, a consumer policy that empowers and protects the rights of all consumers, including consumers with specific needs, the so-called uh, vulnerable consumers. I want us also to see a boost in consumer confidence. This will be um, essential for economic recovery because in the European Union, consumer spending contributed more than 50% of GDP in 2020. I'm interested in particular in the role that consumers have to play in the green transition. We found that since the COVID crisis, consumers are making greener choices. So the post-COVID recovery will be a real opportunity to move to greener consumption habits for a lasting and sustainable economic growth uh, for tomorrow. But right now, consumer confidence is low uh, because of a lack of information or trust in information provided about a product. Uh, because of these honest trading practices during the pandemic, uh, we saw a huge surge in online offers with dubious or expensive COVID-19 protective equipment. For example, at the beginning of the pandemic, we have seen that with the, the mask, uh, or without any effect, or with a very high price. Dark commercial patterns in the digital era are gaining attention in Europe and at international level. And with online shopping set to continue and likely become even more global, we need to give consumers the same level of protection online as they have offline. And we have the same approach at the EU level and the OECD about that. With the new consumer agenda, the Commission's objective is to uh, free consumers from manipulation. Consumers must be able to choose what is best for them, including when it comes to preferences relating to sustainability. It is about building trust by empowering consumers and ensuring a level playing field for businesses. The Digital Markets Act to ensure fair and open digital markets will play a significant role here. Our upcoming proposal for a general product safety directive will also establish a level playing field on the online market and between online and offline operators. But consumer policy needs effective enforcement to maintain consumer trust and boost economic recovery. In our new consumer agenda, the Commission uh, promised to continue investing in digital enforcement capacities. For example, I'm committed to supporting the use of artificial intelligence by business and industry, but AI should be used as a tool for safe and fair markets. One of our initiatives in the coming years is to set up an e-lab at EU level. It will provide national authorities with technologies to conduct investigations online, mystery shopping, accessing the offers and interacting with the traders' technologies in the same way 
as typical consumers. But we should also remember that consumers around the world are facing the same challenges. Everywhere across the globe, the retail trade, including tourism, has suffered because of the pandemic. Economies are experiencing heavy debts and poverty has increased. It is time to regulate the markets around the, around the globe. For policymakers and consumer experts, the response requires a strong international partnership. This is um, as true for the protection of consumers through the pandemic as it is for their empowerment for the digital and green transitions. It is why the Commission is very keen to work more closely with the US and others. And you know that we have for the moment here in Brussels many contacts with our US counterparts. And to keep up our work and in international fora, including the OECD. For example, I strongly believe in cooperating to tackle product safety issues. And I welcome the coordinating role uh, the OECD has played in the voluntary commitments by businesses to adopt product safety pledge. And we try to work with all the partners in the world about that. We have uh, started an action plan with China about the safety of the products. So it's very important to try to attract all the different international players in such a way. But such initiatives can better protect consumer globally. And so I want to thank you for, of course, your attention, but I wish you uh, all a fruitful conference at the occasion of this 50 years anniversary of consumer policy at the OECD. And I, I'm be sure that we will be back for the 100 years anniversary together for the next uh, discussion about the consumer policy. All right, thank you very much. Uh, we'll, we'll be here as well for that. <laughs> Fine, <laughs> it will be a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Something to look forward to. Well, thank you, Commissioner Reinders. Uh, we turn finally to uh, Acting Chair Slaughter from the U.S. Federal Trade Commission. Uh, Ms. Slaughter, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, it is, I, I want to start uh, by expressing my delight to be here today with so many colleagues from around the world and by congratulating the OECD on 50 years of consumer policy work. This half century milestone comes at a time when we must think seriously about the challenges of the future. Like the OECD, the FTC, as the United States primary consumer protection agency, has a long history of grappling with important policy and enforcement issues. And today, especially in the wake of a pandemic that has driven us online for everything from soap to socializing, we are confronting similar challenges as our counterparts across the world in addressing global digital markets. And I want to take, I want to focus in particular on some of the challenges and the perils that we face in those markets. And I may hit some similar themes as my colleagues. Fundamentally, our responsibility is to protect personal autonomy, or as that well-produced video we saw earlier stated, to ensure that people are empowered to make quote, choices that protect their own economic interests and lives. In order for people to make those choices and exercise that autonomy, in order for markets to work for people, markets need to be transparent and competitive. Unfortunately, our markets today are replete with challenges to personal autonomy. Markets are working very well for the largest corporations, but they are not working nearly as well for people. Personal autonomy is imperiled by a combination of dangerous data-driven commercial practices and lack of competition. I will touch on some of these concerning practices, dark patterns and abusive application of artificial intelligence, and then remark briefly on the competition implications and how we can most effectively tackle these challenges by addressing root causes. The use of dark patterns in AI can profoundly harm individuals and undermine democratic values. Dark patterns are the purposeful design of products that push consumers in directions they do not expect or want, such as by sharing more personal information or otherwise manipulating them into taking actions against their best interests. We have and must use both our enforcement authority and our policy tools to address these practices. As for artificial intelligence, it holds the power to transform lives for the better. But almost every day, it seems we learn of some way in which artificial intelligence has gone wrong, often perpetuating bias and discrimination. 
a recent FTC blog post put businesses on notice about our ongoing scrutiny of unfair practices in using algorithms, including failures around transparency, fairness, equity, and accountability. Simply challenging the application of dark patterns and AI on a case-by-case -case basis is not likely to remedy the problems we see in the markets. Instead, we need to address the underlying market structures and incentives that are anchored around indiscriminate collection and application of personal information to fuel data-driven business models such as behavioral advertising. And this is where the FTC's competition lens also comes into play. I hope you will forgive my mentioning competition at this consumer protection focused meeting, but I firmly believe these issues are intertwined. Markets were not, will not work well for consumers unless companies are competing to serve people well, rather than to vacuum up all of their data in order to build, for example, more profitable advertising models. As long as digital markets are controlled by just a few large data hungry online platforms, both consumers and prospective entrants are at their mercy. As so many consumer marketplaces are digital and global, it's critical that all stakeholders and law enforcers center fairness, autonomy, and equity so that the people we endeavor to protect can live their lives and pursue their interests without being unfairly disadvantaged by processes and technology wholly outside their control. To do this effectively, we will need a multifaceted, inclusive approach with consumer protection agencies using all the tools at our disposal, enforcement, study, rulemaking, education, and advocacy to investigate and target the root causes of harmful digital practices. In addition, we need to prioritize collaboration with partners both domestically and abroad. Governments must recognize that consumer protection is a key pillar of broader economic and civic goals and consumer protection agencies must use our voices to ensure that governments center consumer perspectives across their policymaking activity. Conversation and coordination with international partners is also key to success, since the digital markets with which we are most concerned do not respect international borders. The FTC has benefited greatly from participation in international conversations such as this one, and on the enforcement side, our ability to protect consumers is stronger because of active cooperation with our foreign counterparts. We simply cannot effectively meet the challenges posed by today's global consumer marketplace working alone. This conference provides an excellent chance for us to build a more fair and just future together. Many thanks, uh, uh, Acting Chair Slaughter, and thanks to all our, uh, our keynoters for getting us off to such a great start. Uh, as I think you've heard from all of our presenters, we, we as consumers now face a truly global market. Uh, the ongoing pandemic has only accelerated this going digital, going global transformation. As this transformation continues, consumers reap new benefits, uh, but also face new challenges. And it's that transformation and our responses that this conference will examine. I now uh, turn things over to Kathy Smith. We're fortunate to have Kathy Smith with us, a former BBC journalist and television presenter. And in a moment, uh, she will introduce our next uh, speakers and panel. And going forward will be our master of ceremonies over the next three days as we explore all of these fascinating issues. And with that, Ms. Smith, over to you. Thank you.